Hello, I'm War. I hope you all are doing well, and if you're not, I hope things get better for you. If you've been following my Instagram and YouTube recently, you might know that I recently finished up my Monster High illustration series, where I had my Instagram followers vote on the order of the ghouls that I would draw. I mentioned in the last part of the series that I wanted to make another YouTube series with the same voting concept. For this new series, I thought it'd be fun to redesign the original Thundercats. If you've never heard of it, basically, there's some cat people whose homeworld, Thundera, has just blown up. One of the escape ships landed on a place called Third Earth, where they take up residence and help the locals using the power of the Eye of Thundera and friendship, but the evil Mumra and the Plundarians want to get rid of the Thundercats. The original definitely has cheesy 80s cartoon vibes, but it's still fun. It did have a reboot in 2011, but it just wasn't really my cup of tea. Sorry. <laughs> After asking my Instagram followers if they'd be interested in me redesigning the Thundercats, I had them pick which one to do first. Chitara won the vote, so let's hop right into the design process. If you couldn't tell by her name, signature spots, and super speed, Chitara is based off of Cheetah. For my designs, I wanted to lean even further into the alien cat people vibe. I also wanted to stay a bit closer to the sci-fi and 80s workout clothes aesthetic from the original but with a more modern approach and of course some signature war flair. I did some research on cheetah anatomy to get a better understanding of where their speed comes from and also some research on the running style of Olympic sprinters. After gathering some additional visual inspiration, I got started on designing. I mentioned earlier wanting to base my designs more closely on the cat, so we're giving her a big chest, but not the normal kind you would give to a lady. Cheetahs have enlarged hearts and lungs and a bigger rib cage to go with it. They also have smaller heads and long, skinny, but very powerful legs. I tried to translate these features onto a human body, so if you think she's out of proportion for a normal human, you're correct. But this is an alien cheetah lady, so it's fine. For her outfit, I wanted to be aerodynamic but elegant, because Chitara is a very capable and mature lady but still fashionable. I also wanted to incorporate gold into her design because of the golden color of the cheetah, but also because there's an episode where the Thundercats discover gold for the first time and Chitara thinks that it's really pretty, but the rest of them think that it's junk, so they throw it into a ravine. <laughs> I started with the idea for an outfit with gold wing motifs, because wings are often used on speedy characters. It seemed like a good idea at first, but the more I explored it, the more I didn't like it. I realized that I didn't want to use speedster stereotypes and I didn't really like having wing or bird-like designs on my cat people. I was also using lots of V-shapes because they look aerodynamic, but I ended up not really liking those either. So I took a break, looked for some more inspiration, and came back the next day. Said inspiration is some outfits that the princess wears in Hoseki no Kuni. I really like the sleek, chic, and bold shapes of the bodice pieces, the lightweight, sheer tool fabrics, the contrasting black and white, and most importantly, the shoes. These shoes are so fun looking, I love them so much. I feel like the whole vibe of these outfits could add that unique alien flavor I was looking for. Throughout the whole process of designing Jitara, I knew her design had to be just right, because as the first Thundercat that I designed, the vibe and approach she had would affect the whole group so that they can look cohesive. So yeah, no pressure. <laughs> Anyways, using this new inspiration, I drew up some more ideas. Another reason I really like these shoes is because it added more visual weight to the bottom of what had been a rather top-heavy design, hence her big rib cage, long skinny legs, and the need to keep the clothes relatively close to her body, so no big scars this time. I didn't want to just copy the round and oval shapes of the princess's shoes, so eventually I came up with the idea of making the puffy bits more edgy. I thought this looked like she could get more traction, and the poofy look of the shoes made it look like they could help cushion the explosion power of her feet hitting the ground as she runs. I felt like I had finally made a breakthrough in the design because most of the process had me feeling like this. I was able to get a more claw-like feeling from these shapes, which definitely helped me get more into the idea that these people are based on big, feral cats. I started to ditch the aforementioned V-shapes and use more circles to mimic cheetah spots. At this point, I was also spreading the new sharp cushion shapes around her design. I tried putting them on her hips, but I didn't really like it. I ended up just putting it on her hair and on her arm. Well, she does need to be aerodynamic, let's not forget that running isn't the only thing she does. She fights, too. I think she could use this as a sort of arm guard, but it also has a place to slip her staff into when she's not using it, since it's collapsible, kind of like Cat Noir's. On her other arm, I put a sheer poof sleeve to help balance things out. I also started to add a tail-like thing that can hold water. 
The original Thundercats don't have tails, so if I did put them on, it would be sparingly. But during my cheetah research, I found that they use their tail as a counterbalance for when they're turning as they're running, like a ship's rudder. Whether or not the same principle could be applied to a human body, I gave her a fake tail, with weight coming from the water it stores. In Thundercats, Cheetara can run at super speed for as long as she wants. Real cheetahs are built to be sprinters and they can only run at top speed for so long, and take about 30 minutes to recover. Not only do I want my Thundercats to mimic their cat inspiration more closely, I also find that giving characters limitations makes things more interesting, so I thought incorporating a water source into her design would be good for the running recovery process. I end up just feeling a plastic tail shaped bag with water and giving it a straw and a tube that hooks into the top of her outfit, like a camelback. I was feeling confident enough now to move into color. I use mostly gold like yellows with some black and white, all to look like the fur of a cheetah, but I also use some light blues for contrast. But the outfit still wasn't quite right. I was especially worried about how the fabrics look like leather suits. How would she move properly? I had an idea, but I was busy for a couple days so I didn't get to work on it until later. It was sure nice to get my mind off the project though. Sometimes when you're stuck, not working on a project can be a lot more productive than trying to force yourself to crank stuff out. After my break, I put that idea I had to use with another colored sketch. I had imagined a pair of shorts with scalloped edges, black encircled with gold, and a lightweight, flowier fabric. I also quit trying to put the eye of Thunder on her chest like the original because it just hadn't been working that well, so I gave her a belt and put it there. Her main body piece felt a little empty somehow, so I made the center a little lighter, like a kitty tummy. I also put some spots on her leggings to help break up the big swatch of white. I was finally happy with the design! I also ended up doing a colored sketch of her face because I had spent so much time on her outfit, but it was also just for fun. <laughs> At last, I can move on to the final draft. I wasn't sure if I just wanted to do an illustration or maybe a ref sheet. I think I was able to combine the two pretty well. And if you're thinking that her front facing pose looks like Xiangling splash art from Genshin, you're right. <laughs> but it just works so well, uh, yeah. There's not much else to say about the final draft though. I'm just finalizing all the details I've talked about up until now and putting them together. But I realized I haven't talked about her hair and face much, so let's do that now. I wanted her to have a ponytail because I don't know what kind of hairstyle says runner better than a ponytail, but I did experiment with some other styles like down, half up, a braid. I still went with the ponytail, but I gave her this sort of poofy bit on the bottom of her head to spice things up. I didn't realize at first, but the way I colored it kind of made her look like Princess Tutu. <laughs> Her face wasn't too hard, I knew I wanted her to look like a calm and mature lady, but maybe just a teensy bit sassy. Cat-like eye shapes worked well for her, and I gave her the signature teardrop shaped spots that Cheetah have. I never realized until I did this design, but the original Cheetah doesn't have eyebrows. So I just gave mine very thin eyebrows, and I also kept her blue eyeshadow and pink lipstick. And even though the original Thundercats have their ears hidden by their hair, I wanted my designs to have visible ears that also look more like cat ears than elf ears, because kitty ears are so cute! Also, if there are any original Thundercats fan wondering why I didn't do anything regarding Chitara's hidden sixth sense and oracle-like abilities, well, it's because they're hidden. In some of the earlier drafts, I used a few more eye motifs, sort of like a third eye kind of thing, but you all saw how the first drafts went. <laughs> In the end product, she does have some jewelry bits on her ankles and right arm that look a tiny bit like that third eye thing I mentioned, but honestly, it didn't feel like a very important detail to include, and in the original, she didn't have any visual clues on her design about these abilities. And in a way, I think it's more interesting to keep hidden abilities, well, hidden. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And for the sake of trying to keep this video short, I'm going to put my finishing thoughts on the last bit of the speed bait. <laughs> I definitely had a hard time with this design, but I'm glad I stuck with it, even if I had to take a lot of breaks. Because I feel very pleased with what I was able to create, and I hope that you guys like it too. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on the video, since I'm still just starting with this whole YouTube thing, so your feedback would be very helpful. Is there things that you liked or didn't like, or things you think I could improve on? 
Some things aren't so easily changed, but I'll try my best to get better and make more fun videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.